And once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Getting a little tired. Um, just going into winter, less sunlight makes me a little tired overall, a little more tired. Not getting as much sleep as I probably should. Normally at this point, I would probably take a break uh, of a day from the, the filming and just do something else. But I gotta keep motoring because I got a big game uh, coming up and I need this table for it. So I'm trying to get one done every day. I might not always be able to do that, but I'm not at the breaking point yet. And so I'm here for uh, the real people and I'm here for you watching at home. So just know that I may be a little bit longer winded. I notice I uh, have longer pauses sometimes when I'm tired. Um, I apologize for that. Maybe a little less to the point. I apologize for that, but it's necessary. We gotta march on. March onward through the seven ages of the seven ages. Alright, we got some big empire startages this uh, this turn. That is going to reinvigorate anyone, uh, myself included. The first one here is the Ta'ang. Blue counter set, little red gets to put it into play. He had a lot of choices. He almost went with the Danes because um, they our strong empire, but that would have put him in conflict with his own Saxons, so he decided not to do that. He also almost went to Africa to compete there. That might have been good, but it was kind of a restricted empire. I forget what it was, but so he went to Ta'ang. Um, Cowboy's forces are pretty weak in this area right now. They're spread out, spread thin, have, don't have a good hold. The Ta'ang are nice, one, because they start off fairly, you know, close to the front. They score on progress. They also score in Asia as well as China. The only empire to score in Asia, so he can focus on that. That he is going to have to um, compete with the Southeast Asian Empire, the Chams. But if he keeps them kind of, you know, just in Southeast Emp uh, Asia, just focus there, he can spread out and maybe get some points. Anyway, you're going to start off with a starting fight here. It's twenty-seven to one. <laughs> it's our is our um, our ratio there. Um, with a minus five. Now if we look at this chart, there's really only one outcome where he's gonna where little red's forces will get hurt at all, which is I guess if he rolls a five. Because then we got a D. Should see if no the Han don't have any cards they can play. So where do I put my dice? Well I'll use this die here. Okay. And as you can see it's a six. So he's going to, actually, he's, I think he will lose one unit as a result of that. They're pretty entrenched there. It's difficult to um, fight uh, some gorillas in the mountains. Melky made an interesting choice for his um, new empire, the English. Now, the English, they have the effect of converting people who are in England when they start. Presumably, they grow out of that. That empire is what happens. So... What's interesting about this choice is Salamander was actually in that spot. It was a leader of the Saxons. I think he's converted, so he is now an English person, an Englishman. Um, nice, strong empire there. Uh, lots of scoring opportunities. This is one he could hold till the end of the game, uh, potentially. Kind of depends on what happens. He has to get the culture off the ground. These culture cards really change the game in a lot of ways. You kind of have to build the empire up a lot more than you can, you would in the base Seven Ages game, where it's a lot easier to have them rise and fall. You get more rise and fall in the basic Seven Ages game than in Seven by Seven Ages. Um, it's it's a there's a certain favor to keeping your empire intact, keeping it going. Melky's Goths are striking out. If you recall from last time, they're the, they um, not only knock back the progress of the person they're attacking, the Amazonians in this case, or the Amazons, um, but they also score a point every time they do that. So if he wins all three of these, it's going to be three points he gains, and the Amazons will be knocked back into a, this into the second age. So let's do this right now. Um, our first fight we have six to four. Not super good odds with a minus, let's see, that's forest, so minus, two, minus one. No, no, sorry, minus one. Six to four, minus one. And so that's a three to two. I did that math so fast. Five minus one, that's probably good for Melky. Uh, yep, he's, he's going to lose one unit 
and they lose the entirety of theirs. So let's see, who does she want to get rid? Of? Who does she want to get rid of? Um, I think this one. All right, and then if we look over here, we have six plus five. That's eleven to eight, and that's going to be another minus one. So eleven to eight. Um, I'm going to say that's close to a five to four with minus one on that. That's a four minus one is a three. That's a nothing. Um, does Runt want to retreat? He doesn't. Does she want to retreat? I don't think she does. Okay. Five, that's going to be a... All right, he loses one unit, and, or no, two units, and she loses all of her units. And he'll get rid of, I guess, these two guys, right? No. This guy and this guy there. And then our final one, this is a big one. He's pushing into her fertile farmlands there, um, which is also a city. So that's going to give a minus, it's going to be a minus five to this fight for him. Um, but he has six, ten, ten to zero, minus five, so we're in a four to one. Uh, yeah, so anything but a five, five or a six, anything other than a five or a six, and he's got it. He got a two, so that means it's a re-roll. Does she want to stay in it? She does. Two. Why well, it's a reroll is that's N N, which means nothing. Okay, six. So he's gonna lose um, as much as the defender loses. So he's gonna lose a unit. That's basically what all that die rolling was for to see whether or not he was gonna lose a unit. And he is. He'll lose this guy right there. Pretty good. So she's gonna go back three. So you see how this works. One, two, three, and then he gets three points. One, two, three, three for three. All right, we're seeing more military fights against the Amazons. This is against my prediction. My prediction was the Amazons would go down due to um, god strikes, but it seems like they spread themselves so thin that they're they're just getting attacked. And really, you know, their their defensive position wasn't the worst, right? Uh, up here, maybe, <laughs> but down here, uh, they're a bit stronger. But Cowboy is still coming in. He's using his charge card here. Jade the Unicorn is leading. A charge of cavalry um, up the mountain, where Yori Blackpad is fighting with some knights. The only the first knights in the game, and a catapult. So it's going to be a, a two to one um, minus two total. There's some bonuses because of Jade the Unicorn, but some penalties thanks to um, the mountains. So two to one minus two. The numbers actually come out 21 to 11 strength points. Um, one, that's a bad roll for a cowboy. Ah, quarter of the attacking force are gone. And then, oh shit, the attacker's result is they lose everything? Is that right? Yeah, wow. He lost his whole force. That's a really bad roll. Can he do anything about that? He might be able to. So that's just incredibly bad. I don't think he can. Nope. Am I reading that right? Yeah, yeah. All his people are gone. Let's hope he has better luck. He has another two to one here. Uh, this time it's minus five, I think. Yeah, no, minus six. Wow, that's really bad. Two to one minus six um, over the another mountain range. He's really trying to puncture in um, so that he can bring his boats into the Black Sea uh, to get some more European sea areas and try to get points that way. Uh, two to one minus six. God, kid, does he even have a chance of anything? Not really. He can get an N. That's his best result. Oh, well. Six. That's his best result. So I think he'll probably retreat after that. Um, and just move back. Shoot, dang. I thought, thought for sure he was going to do better than that, but he did not. And even Jade the Unicorn got busted out. Um, by busted out, I mean uh, he, I guess he, unicorns are male, right? He got, uh, he got caught. 
Okay, we're gonna end the maneuver phase with Sir Gawain versus Winter Creek. He actually moved there before all of the goth movement and all that. But uh, like I just said last time, the leader fights are gonna be at the end in case more leaders want to get involved. So we're back in the glade. Uh, it seems like all of this is gonna be the glade. It's kind of the most foresty area, which is great for Winter Creek. Um, but again, like last time, unless Winter Creek has a weapon, uh, a ranged weapon, he can't really, and even if he did, it'd be really terrible, he can't really do anything but try to run away um, because he can't do melee attacks unless um, unless he's attacked first in melee. So six, Winter Creek, I guess we'll go here, and Sir Gawain, five. He wants to cut him off. I guess this is the only five, right? Oh, no, no. This is a five. That's fine. All right, and we had one turn already. Winter Creek, uh, well, not one turn. He got to move. Because of his, his woodsy teleportation, he already got here. He just has to get off to this side, so it'll be two more turns. Um, so basically, Sir Gawain's going to get one, two, three, I don't know, a bunch of shots. Well, not maybe like two shots with a with severe negatives because of all these woods, and then it's going to be over. It all added up to one damage. I made a determination decision about these fights. They, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed it. It's tickled me. But um, they tend to be just like small little chase games that don't have a very much result because it's kind of easy to run away. I don't know what to do about that. I think what I'm going to one thing I'm going to do is make it so that if you succeed in killing someone, you're going to get up glory point. You get a glory out of that, um, which is exciting. So there we go. Winter Creek is down to five life now. That's one tough tree. Really destructive civilized action for Giraffe. Not normally her style, but um, she's just playing, I guess. Uh, doing some stuff. Having a little bit of guilty pleasure is kind of how I see it. So she caused a volcano to go off in Ethiopia, blowing up the Great Wall there. That's going to really affect the um, the uh, Pharaonic Egyptians' defense because the Great Wall acts as a, basically a fort for all of all the places. Not that they're really in danger. Their one place of um, trouble is right here across the Suez Canal from Cowboy's forces, but he really hasn't mustered up uh, anyone to attack her. She is vulnerable from the sea, and I guess it's possible the Syracusians could come around this way. More more than likely, they would get hit by a new empire than any of the existing ones. Um, what else did she do? She caused storms in the Baltic Sea, which swept into the North Sea, blew up a couple boats there, one from Runt and one from um, Little Red, and then she did some other things too. What was it? Storms? Oh yeah, she got rid of the entire Amazonian treasury, uh, which was like 40-some bucks. So, pretty devastating. Uh, also got herself Caesar. I completely forgot that she had named leaders. She had Caesar or Jesus. I decided to go with Caesar because I found him first and I'm running out of time. Uh, like I said before, it's kind of hard to find what you're looking for in all of this. And I think that's how she would play it. I don't think she'd be like, oh, no, wait, I really want to compare the differences between the two leaders. And besides, once she saw Caesar, Caesar's pretty donkin good. He's a strategist, a tactic, tactician, and a populist. Um, I went ahead and picked out Spartacus. I it kind of tickled my fancy. So, great job. For, oh, and she also started the Hanging Gardens again, so she got a point for that. Great job, giraffe. What? is missing from this picture. What is absent from this map? If you said the Amazons, if you said the darker of the two green chit sets, you would be right. They're all off over here in this pile that I'm planning to deal with later um, because Runt has discarded her Amazons. Why did she do that? Well, a couple reasons. One, she didn't want to have to deal with Milky's things there. Uh, she realized she was just causing him, giving him points by staying there. She'd kind of done everything she could do with the Amazons. It was getting a little boring. She was entertaining herself with Gawain, but that was a very small part of um, 
what the Amazons were capable of. And so she said goodbye. Plus they, um, you know, they scored on, their main scoring was having a majority of the world, right? Uh, the Egyptians have a good shot at that. I think they might have it right now. Um, and they definitely can get it. They're still, you know, have very little competition despite having lost some forces to Ethiopia. That was a, that was a setback for Runt and something she wasn't counting on. Um, so goodbye Amazons. What is she going to start in their place? Well, she is going to start the Javanese Sri Vijayans right here. Um, which is kind of a, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. So we've seen a lot of people getting their sort of hegemonies in different regions and then an upstart coming in. We have one example of a, of a where it didn't work and one example where it did. So here we have Runt, who seems to be a very capable player, starting right here and a very wealthy, wealthy, um, going against a very wealthy, wealthy uh, empire in the Chams there. Now the Chams have a lot of cities, which is plump. You know, if she takes those over, that would be great. They don't have a lot of military, um, but they do have a lot of money. Little Red's been saving up uh, because he wants to get the points off of it. The Chams score off of money, so I, I'm really excited. I'm really interested to see how this all works out. The the Javanese aren't the best empire. Um, they're more of a trading empire than anything. They don't start off with that much money. Um, but we'll see what Runt can do with it. Let's see what she can do with it. There's not a lot of the synergy between the Egyptians and them, but at least they're they're gonna stay out of each other's hair. They they score on completely different things, I think. Yeah. I forgot I didn't explain why she gets to even start those right now. She played this Phoenix card um, with the discard of her empire, so she's able to start them right away. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we have scored for the round. Some interesting scoring. The the Phronic Egyptians, they're currently getting their maximum score that they can get. They're it's very close to the turn order. And the fact that she's a philosopher, actually. Uh, Prince Waller Blatt is a philosopher. That, um, that's made the difference. Tied, in, tied for land areas in the world. Tied for artifacts. So that would be two less points if we didn't have that philosopher on board uh, for... For a run. Two points off the Javanese already. Second place in Southeast Asia with the one person and having the homeland is good. Um, Flush pulled in five, which is more than Little Red who pulled in four. Um, and those are the two. There's still our final two. And, you know, Cowboy's guy, he's stuck in a dark age. Unless the Phoenicians trade, they're not going to actually move forward. Um, whether or not there's there's not a, like a, an immediate benefit to Cowboy for, for trading with the Phoenicians. So... The main reason he would do it is if someone was catching up to him in points, but they're, you know, he's a good good deal behind, ahead of Little Red, so I'm not sure if he cares enough to spend his actions doing that. There aren't any um, new units he gets for a while. Uh, though, you know, the, those ships could be nice for the Phoenicians if they want to dominate the seas. So I, I don't think they're going to be a big scorer for him. Uh, Cowboy, while we're talking about him, he's scoring seven. That's the second most. Run scoring nine a turn. Cowboy scoring seven, just mainly because he's the only one in the New World. That gives him three right there. And the only well, he was the only one in China. So he's going to start losing out, I think, soon. Um, got that interesting situation between the Han and the Taang. Uh, giraffe scoring decent with six. And Melky is scoring three now, uh, but six total if you include what the Goths did uh, to Runt. They got to keep going though, and they they don't really have it have any units to do a, a strong press, and nor do they have like a lot of weak advanced empires around them. Who could they even attack? They're right here. Um, yeah, it might be that that the the time of the Goths has already passed for Melky. He he's not going to be able to do a lot with them. Uh, next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament, seven by seven ages. This game's a lot of fun. It takes a lot of work, a lot of energy, but it's a lot of fun. I'm I'm enjoying it. I know I changed the rules a lot, but um, it still works for me.